found a uh, mystery something in the woodshed there. You better swear to me that it is not alive and never has been. <laughs> it has never crawled, creep, flown, or had eyes. I guarantee it's nothing gross, Dixie. Look. It better not be, because Will used to bring home the most disgusting things. What's wrong? Put that back. What is it? Just put it back, all right? It's nothing. Was it it's... yours? Mine all mine. Oh, well, Daddy made it. It's nice, huh? Great little present. What was it supposed to be? Well, he must have thought he finished it, or you'd have never wasted the wood. You wanted firewood? You got it. Burn it. You know, as much as I love playing hooky for stuff like this, at this rate, I'm never going to become the Rothschild of domestic wine. Oh, well. I'm never going to be on China Sock either. However, I once was Scoutmaster of the Year. I do remember. I got quite a kick out of that. Yeah, no, you didn't. If I had to do it over again, make a choice between that Scout Medal and the Nobel Prize, it'd be a tough decision. You know? I wonder if Junior's troop needs another scoutmaster. Yeah, I got it, I got it. I have to catch my breath. Yeah, well, I wouldn't blame you if you never spoke to me again. Is that what you want? No. No, but it's probably what I deserve. Look, I know how lousy this timing is with you having just lost Mona and now me pulling the rug out from my dear. Uh, no, actually, I don't feel the least bit shaky. I, strangely enough, I feel inexplicably calm. Well, I hope it, when it sinks in, you won't want my hide nailed to the wall. <laughs> Jack, do you think you'll really be happy with Laura? Not like with you. We won't have fireworks, snare drums, and shooting stars. What I have with Laurel is quieter. But it's just as real. Will that be enough? Enough for a good life. Yeah. Enough to set my soul on fire. Now there's only one woman in the world who's ever been able to do that. I know that what we had comes around maybe once in a lifetime. I had my shot at it. Now I have to walk away from it. It's not easy. It's almost impossible, but it's, it's the only way I can see to do it. Please say something. <laughs> Well, maybe I'm pressing my luck here, but you see, I can read you pretty well. But right now, I'd love to know what's going on behind those eyes. Are you all right with this? You're right. You're always right. I mean, it's silly of me to try to keep secrets from you. You're just too quick for me. Cut to the chase. That is my earring. Why the rigmarole? What's it doing with Laurel's stuff? What are you hiding? What is it that I'm not supposed to know here? I promise you won't get mad. All bets are off. I can't believe this. Laurel's in a coma and she's still driving a wedge between us. Enough with the crazy talk. You came that close to calling off our engagement because of her vicious campaign against me. Laurel doesn't have a vicious hair on her head. All she's trying to do is get to the facts. The fact is she hates me. The fact is she always has. The fact is she's Enough different. already! All she's trying to do is protect me, protect me and my kids. From the woman who wants to spend her life devoting herself to making your family happy? Maybe Laurel doesn't want you to be happy. Oh, that's a bunch of hooey and you know it. Maybe she's so burned out on marriage she wants to spare you the agony. Maybe she and I were mortal enemies in another life. I don't know. All I know is she's trying to split us up, and I'm not going to let her do it. 
What did you do? What did you do? I went over to Laurel's house the night before her accident. And? And I threw my pride to the wind. I groveled. I begged her to leave us alone so we could be happy. What happened? She promised to leave us alone. That's it. I swear. That's all. I swear it. Then what is your earring doing crawling into her personal effects? I guess it must have fallen off while I was talking to her. She found it, picked it up to return it. You believe me, don't you? You're not still suspicious. You want to go through with the wedding, don't you? I believe you. Thank you. But I want the straight goods from here on in. All my life, I swear it. I... Your trust means everything to me, Trevor. I should have trusted you with... What? What now? Look, there's a reason I didn't tell you about going over to Laurel's. And I'm ashamed of it, but it got ugly. Ugly? Everything I said to Laurel seemed to push the wrong button. She was screaming at me, and she kept poking me in the chest with her finger. She finally got so angry, she pushed me real hard, and, and one of these earrings flew off, and... I got so freaked out, I, I just left without it. Laurel ain't the pushy-shovey type. It takes a lot to push her in that direction. Well, I didn't provoke her. Who said you did? All I'm saying is she must have been emotionally upset. Poor Laurel, you know, she's had a tough life. Two bad marriages, a damaged child, and now this. Maybe she was a little paranoid. And probably rather unladylike, but that doesn't matter now. I mean, what matters is she's in there fighting for her life. I take back that I said she was vicious. I, I wouldn't dream of holding a grudge against her. I only hope that when she comes out of this coma, that she's forgotten all about our silly squabble. Can't we change the subject? I don't want to dwell on this. It's just, it's negative stuff. I, I want to plan our wedding. You do want to marry me, don't you? You bet your sweet patootie I do. You make me happier than anyone I've ever known. Daryl here. I love you. You. How could I be angry? You're standing by the woman you married and... and you're devoted to your daughter. Actually, I'm, I'm deeply moved. Are you saying you understand? Did you think I wouldn't? What I'm asking is how... how, how do you feel? Are, are you okay? I will be. You never cease to amaze me. I'm Erica Kane. I'm supposed to amaze. I wonder how many of those people out there that are amazed by you know what a wise and compassionate woman you really are. Well, all true heroines are misunderstood. How am I ever going to do this? How am I ever going to give you up? You won't. You don't have to. You know that little piece in your heart that belongs to me? Is it big enough to hold Bastille Day in Paris? And that smorgasbord picnic in the suite at the Royal Plaza Hotel? And the fireworks over Central Park? And the madcap wedding at Nexus? So you hold on to those moments, Jack. They're yours. They're ours. And they're forever. I plan to hold on to those moments, cherish them for as long as I live. I'd be very, very sad if you didn't. This is starting to sound an awful lot like goodbye, isn't it? Well, isn't that the point? You know, from the moment I first met you, you've been a major part of my life, whether we were on or off, or speaking or not. Somehow we've always been connected. Are you saying you'd like us to be friends? No. I don't think that word would ever cover what we are. But I tell you this much, 
If you ever push me completely out of your life, I don't think I could survive it. Well, I certainly don't want to be responsible for your demise. <laughs> Or something close. You certainly know that I wish you all the best. I know that. Because you are the best. Hey, Slugger. It's me, Trevor. Got a surprise for you. <laughs> Bet you've been looking for this, huh? It's your wedding ring. Eavesdropping? What, me? Oh, maybe. I heard Jack swear off Eric and... I promised to get back together with you. He's a slow learner, but my hats are off to him. Hey, I didn't know he had such good taste. Passed up the brass and went for the gold. Hey, this is just what you wanted. Don't you think it's time maybe you could wake up and give out a little hoot? I told you so, Trevor. Hey, take it from Jack's worst critic, too. This ain't no con job. He's been here through thick and thin, night and day, praying for you. Anybody can see he loves you. So open your eyes. Claim your man. Be happy. You deserve it, Laurel. You're a great dame. Hey, if Jack weren't in the picture, I sure shooting would be. Laurel? Laurel, it's me, Trevor. Laurel, can you hear me? Don't be scared. You had an accident. You're in the hospital, the Pine Valley Hospital. They're treating you fine. Everything's going to be just fine. Doc, Doc, she just opened her eyes again. Laurel, you're going to come out of this. You're gonna come out of this. You're gonna be fine. You're a real trooper, kid. You're my slugger. Come She's on. Still non-responsive. Oh, come on, Doc. This is the second time today she's opened her eyes. Involuntary motor response. Well, what do you want from her? Her eyes. What do you want? Her dancing and a rumble on the top of that tabletop? You, 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 you want her with a basket on top of her head? Her opening her eyes has got to mean something. Yes, but we're not sure what. Well, you're not sure what it is. It could mean that her condition is improved. All right, all right, you hear that? On the other hand... No, no, you just stop it right there. <laughs> you just stop it right there, you just quit where you're at. She is gonna make it, period. Hold on to that positive attitude. Yeah, you count on it, pal. Hope is the best medicine there is. Hope is the best medicine there is. What do we need to hear that for $900 a pop? Hello? 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 You just forget Dr. No Nothing there. You're gonna come out of this, kid. You and Jack will pick up right where you left off and everything's just gonna be, it's gonna be fine. And there's no hard feelings. Jane's a great lady. And she'll make a terrific wife and a good mother to my kids. It's a role she was meant to play. You get some rest, huh? You need it. And don't you worry. I ain't going anywhere, friend. I'm gonna be right here. <laughs> 